Hi, this is Charlie Orchard again. We're going to continue on with discussion for how to uh, use Landy KG Data Store. This is part two of four. And here we're going to talk about adding a reading to a, to a new site. The first part was how we just actually added a new site. Now we're going to add a reading. In review, the site that we set up was the Joe Glenn. And to go in and begin to uh, use it, we need to drill down into it and or select this site. I'm going to just quickly show you his review. This is your sort of front page um, over time. Here's an example of a, this is actually our place, and the number of monitoring sites that we have set up here at the ranch. Uh, this is a demonstration site. And so it's one that, you know, people can go to to look at. But as you can see, we've got photo points and we've got T100 sites that are set up. In this case, I'm going to go back to what we're looking at. We've got a single site. We want to add a reading to this site. So I'm going to click on the Joe Glenn. And it should drop me into the site spotlight page. We need to talk about that a little bit. You'll see there's four tabs, site readings, permanent location record, permanent PLR photos, permanent location record photos, and compare. And uh, permanent location record, when you set up a new monitoring site, it will automatically default you to this permanent location record. This is one time we fill it out. And so um, in this case, this is the same information that we talked about. It's filled out one time general information relative to the name, the date, or precipitation zone, when it was established. Location notes can be documented. The GI or GPS coordinates, latitude, longitude, elevation aspect. Uh, important uh, parts, <clears throat> excuse me, such as transect specifications. Which way is the line? What, what direction is the transect facing? What are the distances of the hoops? All of these numbers can be changed if, for example, you know, I just put the default distances for a T200 in here. What side of the uh, tape that the reading was on? Typically it's south. Um, if you've got soils information relative to texture, is it sandy? Is it clayey? Is it somewhere in between? You know, is it deeper than 20 inches? You know, yes, no, maybe. High rocks, low rocks, uh, where do we sit as far as sand, do you think? So this is all detailed information that you can put into here. We talked a little bit about the brittleness or the, the rot rate that we think that it might be, the range region. If we know what the, the ecological site description is, we can note that. On the right-hand side, <clears throat> it's important to note why that the site was chosen. Uh, is it accessible, which that should always be checked. Does this represent a baseline, or does it represent the pasture, or is it a concern area? The information relative to that can be included in the notes here. The pasture information, and uh, what's the name of the pasture, what is the size of the pasture, how grazable is it? Is there a lot of cliffs and, 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 and trees with, that cannot be grazed, uh, where it would be a lower lower grazeability than a pasture that's very open and has uh, uh, just, you know, forage resources across all of it. Uh, information relative to the historical management, maybe what your management goals are. The production goal range, which we can get from soil surveys or ecological site descriptions, what you presume to be a residual goal range, and then the expected plants. Now, that doesn't mean those plants are there, but at least the plants that are expected to be there, which you could get from a range, a soil survey, or you could get from an ecological site description. Anyway, that information is filled in one time, and this will be associated with this site from here forward. The next tab is the PLR photos, and the photographs are um, every site, every site will have at least, or has the capability to put six photographs in. And in this case, if I wanted to add, it will allow you to browse. If I add, and I can choose to um, um, choose file, 
I can go to my uh, sites that I, I, my files that I have set up on my computer already, and I've num numbered my images. I can choose the, the, the image itself or double click on it. That image is uh, loaded up. I can add the photo, and this will take a moment to do, but you'll see that the photograph is actually will, will pop up. The photo when you when you see this uh, once the photo is is actually been uploaded, um, Data Store does have some limitations. The photograph shouldn't be bigger than five megabytes, um, which I it, most of our photographs are one megabyte or less um, or megapixels, and it's a deal where that um, those are more than adequate as far as size goes. And you'll see that this is still uploading. I think has, some of that has to do with the fact that I'm doing this video as well. And so it's taking a little bit more time than usual. But it's really a function of your bandwidth and uh, your inter internet capacity. And so here you've got an example of a photograph that was, was uploaded. The last tab that we have over here is a comparison tab. And we, we actually have to have more than one site reading for you to actually do any comparison. So that will come later. But I'm going to jump back over here to the site readings tab. And what we want to do is, is, is we've got this site. We're on the site spotlight page. We're going to add a new annual reading. And so with that, it's going to say, when is the reading date? This is important because you want this to correlate with the date that you filled out the permanent location record. Because if those two dates aren't together, when you go, Data Store says, well, the photograph was entered or said it was done on the 30th of, of uh, April, but the reading was done on the 1st of May. So those two dates don't correlate. So you want to make sure that the dates are consistent. And then it asks who, who read the site. And so I can say Charlie, and we can say who entered the data. We can say Charlie, and we can hit save. And that now allows us to create a new reading. And you'll notice this is a, uh, uh, we're using a blink reading. So there's six basic tabs right here. We've got general information. And this is all the information that you collected using the paper form. We've got general information. When, what was the date? You know, has the pasture acreage, have you subdivided the pasture anymore? Um, is the pasture with that new subdivision? Is there a is there a, a difference? Uh, did you find the site markers? You know, because this is used in maintenance as well. Uh, did you have to replace any of the fuzzies or the hoop the plot markers that we have? General notes, management recommendations, all of that stuff goes right here. The photos you will see, the first photograph that we entered correlates with our first reading, and so you see that image in there. You'll also note um, uh, we needed to change this. We can change this. Oh, we could click on this, and we could actually change. Or if we click on this, we can actually see the uh, full size of the image right there. And so it's it always allows you to to make sure that you're pleased with what the the photograph looks like. Weather, if you recall, the uh, the weather, man, I'm right, eight minutes. Uh, the amount of product, the actual precipitation that fell from date to date can be included here. Actual, the uh, general tr uh, profile of weather relative to temperature the previous fall was it average, above average? Where was the temperature relative to the winter? spring, etc. And then the same goes with precipitation. Was the previous fall average or above average? Just, you know, how did you feel that it was generally? We have a production tab, which allows you to put in when we do our production, it allows you to put in your grazing cage production, because we encourage you to have a grazing cage at each of these sites. Um, actual raw weight, the weight of the bag, which usually we say is zero, the percent dry, and it will actually calculate the production that's that's uh, been been that's in the cage and you can do the same thing with the pasture production 
um, entering those weights. I'm going to jump to a site here shortly that shows that information. There's information relative to grazing. Left side, which has to do with grazing and allows you to take a look at the grazing index. You know, what sort of intensity took place? How much rest actually took place? Uh, what side, season of use? When was grazing? Did it occur? Um, precipitation, above average, below average. That coupled with the type of animals, the size of the animals, number of heads, start date, end date, will give you a stocking rate. And I'll just, like I said, I'll go to one that where you can actually see it. And then we've got the cover category, and in this case, bare ground, litter, basal, moss, rock. For each of the hoops, that data is entered. Um, and so with that, let me jump over to one. We'll go to Laura Elliott. And so this is a site spotlight page for the Lower Elliott. You'll see that we've got, you know, six years worth of monitoring data. Um, I'll jump into the 2016 data and just quickly show you, you know, here's the general information that was in here. Here's the photographs. Notice that you could change or delete these photographs if you wanted. This is the live site. What took place as far as weather? Where did we sit as far as production uh, goes? The, what, the, what was the production in the cage? What was the production out of the cage? To note, you can do you know multiple clippings on the outside of the cage. We actually be, have begun, and you've got capacity to assign percent of the pasture that it was actually at that weight. And so in this case, we were somewhere between 1,100 pounds and 1,080 uh you know and that it, it both of those were about 50 percent we figured about 50 percent at 1105 pretty consistent generally though with that information relative to how much was uh uh on the inside the cage and how much was on the outside you can see that the we noted the utilization actually calculated out to be less less than, than zero or zero Grazing information, here in this case, we're actually able to put in the amount of intensity, how much rest it had, uh, season of, of uh, grazing. In this case, it wasn't grazed. Average precipitation gave us a plus four. This was a rested pasture, so there were no animal days of grazing for this year. And then here was our cover category. And as you can see, we had, you know, bare ground, litter, basal, all of those figures were entered into there. Our average leaf heights, our maximum leaf heights, our percent live canopy that we saw, and then the plant diversity. Two grasses, two kinds of forbs, zero of any other kind of species. So in that case, what we're able to do is uh, um, that, that allows us to, once that information is in, we can go to a view report and it will turn into a PDF that actually includes all of the photographs and all of the data and you've got it complete. And so I'm about out of time. The next, in, the next image will talk about how we begin to compare site, a site over time. Again, this is Charlie Orchard. Thanks for tuning in.